Hello students, in this video we'll see an example of computing yield rates of bonds given information about the coupon structure. Let's suppose that we have a par valued bond priced at $1,500. Making quarterly coupon payments of twelve percent if the bond has a ten year duration, lifespan, ten year redemption date, because duration is something a little bit different. So if the bond is a ten year redemption date, then find the yields. We know that it's a par valued bond, so when bonds are priced at par, so par valued, implies that the price is equal to the face, unless it's otherwise specified that's also going to be the redemption value. So this means par, and this is if unless otherwise specified. Now we can use our pricing formula. We know that the price of a bond is the face value of the bond times the effective coupon rate. A bracket N J plus C, which in this case is F, new based on J and N. That's our bond pricing formula. So for us, we know that the nominal rate is 12, so our R will be 0.12 over 4 for the quarters. So we will have a 0.03 value for R. And so therefore we have that F times R is 1,500 times 0.03. And we know it's a 10-year bond, so our number of coupons is going to be 4 times 10, which is 40. And now we wish to find the yields, so I need to find J from this equation. So we have F, the price is the face, is F times R A bracket 40 J plus F new to the 40th power. And so we see that all the F's are going to cancel out over here. So we have 1 is equal to 0 0.03 A bracket 40 J plus new to the 40th power. And this equation over here is now an equation that only involves involves J. Indeed, we know that a bracket 40 J is 1 minus nu to the 40 over J, and nu is 1 over 1 plus J, so this equation only involves J, and it can be solved numerically. On a calculator, on a financial calculator, or on a computer. So the parameters of the problem, the fact that it's priced at par, tells us that P and F are the same. The fact that it's not otherwise stated means that the redemption value is the face value. All those parameters plugged into the bond pricing formula will become can, will cancel out, and we'll be left with an equation that only involves the effective rate per quarter. Once we find the effective rate per quarter, we can find any of the corresponding interest rate yields for the bond.